Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So upon viewer request, I decided to make a video, um, you know, top 5 video, mainly because I, I didn't really have that much to do today in a daily video. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to give you guys my opinion for the top 5 best aggressors in the game, um, how you could gem them and how you, you could use them in the game. Um, this is a list mainly based on, I think it's it's half and half, half of it is like the usefulness of the monster, um, the other half is like the overall strength, you know, like just, like, you know, if you have a monster with like monster stats, then, um, you know, that monster might probably will be ranked higher than others. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna just go in really, really quick. Um, it's just a really quick top five list, but I think there are some, def there are gonna be some ties here. Um, you know, please allow me to cheat a bit. There's it's 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 really hard. It was really hard, um, really hard not not including some some of the monsters on the list. Um, number five, I wanted to um, I wanted to place the dark sea star and the dark monkey here. Like this is just I think they're equally as useful. Um, allow me to explain. I think a lot of people would disagree with me on this. Uh, they would think that the dark sea star was definitely a lot more useful than the dark monkey. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Dark Monkey first. His his base HP um, for a defender is is pretty good. Um, I think most defenders have pretty pretty high amounts of HP. Um, 2,800 is definitely a little bit on the higher side um, for just all monsters in general. If you take a look at, at some attacker monsters, um, you know their HP is definitely a lot high, a lot lower. Uh, but the, his main his main selling point I think is his base defense stat. Um, for a four star is really really high. The other reason why I wanted to wanted to place him here is because it's very very easy to get this monkey to Evo three because he has farmable counterparts. Like you can actually farm him in um, in I think it's the last map, like the very very last map that that's available to us right now. You can actually farm monkeys, and so you can get him to Evo three really really quickly. So it's as as soon as you get him, um, it's really really easy to just you know, raise him straight to Evil Three. The other thing is he has um, he has a very very nice leader skill. His his leader skill is for attack power, and this is global. This works everywhere. Um, I think the Dark Sea Star has an equally as valuable leader skill with crit. Um, but I think in mo most cases um, the attack leader skill is definitely superior. Like in 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 more cases, like if you have the case where your monsters are like built uh, they don't have as much crit as they need from from gems um, you can definitely just like kind of boost it up a little bit with dark sea star but then there's also the chance of your your crit rate like maxing out like if you pair the dark sea star with some other um, you know attack monsters that have like over 90 percent crit rate um, then it, it's kind of wasted like the the leader skills isn't, isn't as useful so I think his his leader skill is definitely a little bit more useful than the crit leader skill his Defense down is also really really nice. Like, there's not a lot of monsters that have um, that have 100% defense down. Although this is tied on his second skill, he's only a single target unit. Um, although this is tied on onto his second skill, like it's it's still um, it's still pretty rare. There's not that many units that, that actually have 100% defense down, even on like either on first or second skill. Um, so I I don't necessarily think. That him being a single target unit is is weaker in any way to an AOE unit because single target units do have their uses. Um, you, if you use him against like boss monsters, like boss monsters that have a lot of HP. For example, Golem Speed Ten, which is probably the most popular place where aggressors are used. Um, if you use him against the boss, he can actually provide an armor break. And there's no other armor breaker in the game that also is an aggressor, so that makes him unique in this sense. Um, and yeah, his uniqueness and his, um, I think, you know, how this really isn't um, replaceable, and how his his defense stat is slightly superior to the Dark Sea Star. Um, I would put him here 
um, on the same place with the Dark Sea Star. The reason why, like after I said all these nice things about the Dark Monkey, the reason why I placed the Dark Sea Star um, as a tie against him is because the Dark Sea Star is useful everywhere. Like you don't necessarily um, always 100% need armor break. Like you can provide armor break. Like another monster, a different monster. Like in Arena, for example, you can have like a Woodley or something like that to provide armor break. Um, so you don't necessarily need a a monster that has you know that has armor break in one of their skills and aggression on the on the other. Um, the other the other thing is the you know the Dark Sea Star has aggression on both her skills, so she's all, always going to be doing doing lots and lots of damage. Um, and you know although her defense stat is a little bit lower, her HP is is slightly higher. So in this in this sense, she's um, She's pretty much just as tanky as the as the Dark Monkey, you know. If you if you have like the proper gens with like HP sub some HP sub stats and stuff, you can definitely um, boost it really really high. The the crit leader skill, although you know I, I did say that sometimes it can max out and stuff. Um, the the good thing about this leader skill is it can actually help you make certain monsters usable. So, for example, you have an attacker that um, doesn't have a square slot and is like, you know, reliant on crit damage. You can actually use the Dark Sea Star leader to boost the crit rate of that monster up. And this this crit leader is also um, also it's it's not uh, it's it's usable everywhere. That's that's what I meant to say. Um, it's not like limited to you know dungeons or PvP or anything like that. You can use this leader skill everywhere. And crit rate leaders are actually a li little bit more rare than attack leaders. There's actually more monsters that have attack leader than, than crit rate leaders. Um, so yeah, she definitely has her uses as well. You can use her in a lot of dungeons. Pretty much every single golem dungeon you can use her in, um, you know, golems B10. She's pretty, pretty good for arena. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is they're both dark type. And dark type monsters do come with that nice 100% crit, crit damage. So, um, you know, I do really, really favor dark monsters a lot more than, than light monsters. So that's, that's number five. Um, number four, I think, um, I'm not, I'm not too sure if I should, uh, like, make this a tie. Um, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be the light, light Shiva. Um, yeah, wait, actually there's no tie. It's just, it's just the light Shiva. Um, the light Shiva is really, really nice because he has a, he has battle rush. This skill is, I think, unique to only two monsters. Only the light Shiva and the dark, um, Odin has battle rush, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, pretty sure. Like, I'm not too familiar with the light dark nat fives, but, um, he also is an HP aggressor. He has HP aggression on his second skill. HP aggression is is um, in many ways not as strong as as uh, defense aggression. Um, it used to be that HP aggression didn't scale as well as defense aggression, but ever since the buff, um, HP aggressors did get a lot stronger. The reason why he's really, really strong as an HP aggressor is because he has the ability to heal himself. So through his battle rush, he is able to um, gain HP and SP. So he's basically always going to be healing himself. So there won't, like, his sustain won't be a problem. It won't be hard to to heal him up, even if you boost his HP over, like you know, to to like I don't know, 14k or some some crazy number like that. Um, or not 14. I'm um, 140k. I mean, um, and he also has this really nice leader skill. If you can at ever summon him as a variant, it's gonna be a little bit hard to get um, Nat Five leader skills. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna weigh this too heavily. Um, I don't think. It's too. It's it's all that easy to get a Nat Five leader skill, but obviously he is from, he is from Fusion. So if you make an Evil Three version of him, you will need at least three Shivas. Um, and if you fuse three Shivas, you know there's a chance that one of them can, like there's a higher chance that one of them can come out as a variant than if you, um, you know, if that monster is only, only summonable. Um, yes. So. He, he also has bat Battle Rush, like his, I talked about the HP healing part of his Battle Rush, but there's also an SP portion of his Battle Rush, which basically acts as a, a morale boost, meaning that he's going to be able to spam his second skill a little bit more, um, making making sure that he's going to be able to do lots and lots of AoE damage through his second skill. He is Light Type, um, he doesn't have that, you know, really, really good crit damage, but Light Type monsters do come with 10% more crit, 
Um, and he is a nat 5, so I think he, I definitely think he deserves to be on this this part of the list. So the next monster um, I wanted to put on the list is um, is is also another light monster. Um, this is the light Victoria. All right, right here, right over here. Now, some people might disagree with me on this. Like they they might think like she's probably number one, or or that the Dark Sea Star is stronger than her. Um, there's a very very good reason why the light Victoria is is ranked a little bit higher. It's mainly due to her superior leader skill. This is similar to the Dark Monkey's leader skill, but it actually has a, um, basically 5% more. Like, you know, effectively 5% more um, attack power. Additionally, she also has much better stats. Like, her HP um, is higher than the Dark Monkey, but her defense is also higher than the, the Dark Monkey. Um, you know, it basically has to do with her stat dis distribution. Not a lot of her stats went to recovery, which is like recovery is pretty much um, you know not as useful as the other stats. Um, so her stat dis distribution is really really nice. Also, she is an aggressor that is that is useful everywhere. So she ha always has that. Um, I mean, she she has like double aggression, so you can basically use her everywhere. You don't, you're not really limited to to using her any any one place. Um, the other really good thing is Victorias are also obtainable through fusion. So if you are willing to put in the work, you can get her to Evil 3 relatively easily. Um, the other thing is it's also uh, a lot of people that play during the first month got her from a from a Guardian dungeon, um, and a lot of, a lot of people did did get her as a variant because the chances of summoning a variant from um, from your 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 stones are actually a little bit higher than summoning a variant, um, you know, a variant nat four from from eggs. Um, so and also there's a chance to get her as a variant if you do the fusion as well. Like if you if you want to make her evil three, you'll need to fuse um, basically 15 more Victorias, and one out of those 15 Victorias are likely to be a a variant. Um, so. Yeah, so there, there's a pretty high chance that you can get her as a variant, and that's why this leader skill is weighed really, really heavily on this monster. Um, when I was, you know, basically grading her for this for this top five list, um, she's also light. Like, I think I think light monsters are a little bit underrated because the a lot of people don't really value that extra 10% crit. They think 10% is really, really easy to to achieve. Um, the, the good thing about her having 10% more crit is you can actually make really good use of the of the crit rate um, because you don't have to gem her with a crit rate gem. Like you can basically gem her with um, three defense gems that have crit rate substats. And though those crit rate substats have like a two roll, then you know it averages to about maybe 14% each. Then that's that's around um, if you have three. That's like 40, 42%. Wait, am I, is my math right? Yeah, that's like 42%. And then plus the the base 20% um, would be around like 62%, which would be relatively high and relatively reliable to make use of um, you know any additional crit damage substats that you might have gotten in your gems. So yeah, I think I think she's definitely she definitely deserves to be here. Um, and and yeah, I think that's that's um, that's pretty fair. Now, number two, I decided to make this a tie because there's two monsters that are very very similar. Um, you guys probably might have guessed it; like they're pretty much exactly the same. It's a tie between the Light Hana and the Dark Cupid. Um, I would actually rate the Dark Cupid slightly higher than Light Hana just because of his stats. If you take his stats and leader skill um, is is slightly superior, but it, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter all that much. Like his defense and his HP is is higher. His stat dis distribution is superior to to the Light Hana, um, but it doesn't really matter too much. I think I think in the grand scheme of things, two of them basically have the same skills. Um, she also has slightly I think slightly higher recovery. So although she doesn't have as much defense, I think I would rather have the defense to be honest. Um, 
She has a pretty nice leader skill. She has the recovery um, recovery leader skill that's global. You can use this everywhere. Um, this is only useful if you're using a healer. So she basically buffs herself with her leader skill if you if you use this leader skill. You don't really use this leader skill unless you don't have a, another more useful leader skill since this leader skill isn't really useful for everyone. Obvious, obviously, uh, you know, if you had like an attack leader skill or an HP or a defense leader skill, you can use that for, for everyone since almost everyone needs those stats. Recovery is still useful on normal monsters. It makes makes it so they get more HP from like the red souls. Um, it also makes makes it so when they get healed, they actually heal for a little bit more. Um, but it, it doesn't really affect their healing all that much to make this, uh, you know, like... To, to ever choose this over a HP or defense or attack leader skill in, in most cases. Um, she has HP aggression on her first skill, which is really, really nice. It scales with HP. And she has a shield. Like, this this shield is really, really strong. It's a shield that scales with um, with her max HP as well. So the higher her HP is, the, the better this shield is. I don't know if they fixed the bug yet. I think they fixed the bug already um, to make it so... Um, the, heal, the, the shield is scales with her HP. Um, this used to scale with the allies HP, which meant it wasn't as good. But now since it scales with the, the, the monster's HP, it means that the higher HP you have, you're going to be doing more damage, and you're going to be able to provide a thicker shield for your allies. Um, it's the same thing for the Cupid, but the Cupid has a, has a better leader skill, which is the, the HP leader skill. It also works really, really well with himself, because... He, since he has, you know, like, high, really high base HP, uh, he can make good use of this leader skill. And through this leader skill, he's going to be able to have more damage, and his, he's going to be able to provide his allies with an even thicker shield. So he's definitely a little bit better than the than the Hana, um, but you, you'll have to summon a, a variant Cupid for, for this leader skill to work. Um, which, unfortunately, I don't have. God damn it. <laughs> Why did it, why did I have to get so salty from from just making a top five list? All right, so number one, number one, um, this is probably purely purely th theoretical. I've never seen a person with this monster. It is the Dark Sig Siegfried? Um, he is just strong for one reason. He has just the best stats ever. Like his, he is a dark monster, meaning that he has that nice 100% base crit damage. And he has 3,800 base defense. He's an aggressor that has aggression on both both his stats, so he can use him just you know for literally anything. Um, and he also has like a really high HP pool. Like out of all the defense aggressors, he has the the highest. Age. I think he has the highest. Yeah, I think this is slightly higher than the Dark Sea Star. Um, and yeah, his defense is 3,800. Like, what more do you want me to say? He also has a defense leader skill, which makes him strong in clan battles. If he can happen to summon a variant Siegfried, um, it can make him hit even harder and make him even tankier in clan battles. I don't think there's much to say about this guy. He's just, like, just stat-wise, he's the best. Um, he's also nat 5, so it's going to be much, much harder to get him. I actually don't know how you can obtain him. Um, I'm not sure if he's summonable from the Siegfried eggs. I don't think... Those can summon light dark monsters, so you might have to. He might only be obtainable from um, light dark eggs, so you have to have some insane luck to to summon him. But yeah, I think he's definitely one of the strongest. Um, I think just one of the strongest monsters in the game period because of just how insanely OP his stats are. Um, and that's it. That's that's it for my my uh, my top five list. I did say I was going to tell you guys how to gem them, but it's very, very easy to gem aggressors. Like, you follow this rule for every single aggressor in the game. Like, almost every single. Actually, no, pretty much every single aggressor in the game. There's there's a few, uh, there's a, there's a few really, really unique exceptions, like the, the, uh, the Light Cupid, who has, like, the only recovery aggression. Which is like, like only he has this. Nobody, no other monster in the game has this. Um, but you don't, you wouldn't want to gem a monster with like three slot recovery because he would just be squishy as hell and just die immediately. Um, and 
even if you have that much recovery, you're going to be healing to max HP any anyways, like every single turn. So you don't need to cap out on his recovery. So like you could do, um, you know, HP defense recovery on him. You know, some some something like that um, to make make use of his recovery aggression. But for most aggress aggressor monsters, if they're not dark, if they're light. There's actually no aggression monsters that are, that are in the normal three elements. All aggressors are, are light and dark. Um, if that monster is light, you basically gem them with three slots of the same type of, uh, like, whatever type of aggression they have. So if, if it's the light Victoria, you would gem her with three, three slot defense. Um, if it's, like, you know, if it's like the light Hana, you would gem her with three slot HP because it's HP aggression. Um, you know, same thing with the Light John, who is also HP aggression. You would gem her with three three slot HP. She's actually pretty good um, if you can if you can get her as well. But it's it's probably harder to get her as a variant. She does have a have a nice attack leader for your team. Um, pretty damn high HP. I, I didn't include her or the Dark Miho in this list because their their HP aggression is not. Um, as strong as defense aggression because HP aggression is harder to heal to max HP. Like if you have a monster with a ton of HP, it's much much harder to sustain that monster than if you had a monster with um, a small pool of HP but very very high damage mitigation. You know, it's easier to sustain that monster. That's that's one of the main reasons why defense aggression is is stronger than HP aggression. Um, so for for light monsters, you just basically gem with three slots of whatever type of aggression they have. Uh, for dark monsters, most of the time you want to gem with with one slot, um, one slot crit rate, because they have that nice 100% base crit damage. So you want to make sure you you um, abuse that as as much as possible. There are a few exceptions to this. Um, the I think the one of the only few few exceptions would be like the the dark um, July. Because mainly because she has a more like useful skill, like she's mainly used for her adrenaline instead of her aggression. So you still want to stack her HP as high as possible, and um, you know obviously you can have as much crit rate substats to to make use as this as well. But um, and her her base base crit damage. But for most stark aggressor monsters, you you want to use one slot crit rate to um, to to get to make use of their their nice base 100% crit damage, but uh, it, it's not always the case. Like obviously, if you have like really really good gems with like um, you know three three slot like three gems with like over 20% crit, for example, then you can have a monster with like 70% crit, um, and then gemmed on like you know three slot three slot HP or three slot defense, and that would be like insanely OP. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's that's all I have to say for for uh, my top five list of aggressors. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this, and um, you know if you guys have any any opinions or think I I missed anything, um, definitely do comment below. And yeah, if you guys have any requests for whatever videos you want me to make, um, I'm always happy to to make them for you. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.